All right, this is I do, you do, surface area of prisms and cylinders. Here I have a rectangular prism, and I'm going to find the surface area of it. Um, there's a formula for that, and that is surface area of prisms and cylinders is two big Bs, which stands for areas of the base, because there will be two bases, plus perimeter, and that stands for perimeter of that base that we choose, times height. Now this is a rectangular prism, so any one of these sides does have a congruent parallel side. I'm going to choose this rectangle over here that is 5 by 6. I'm going to go ahead and find the area of it and show it to you there as an area of 30. And this is what a surface net would look like of that, and I'm going to show you my two bases here that are 30. And then I want to highlight this uh, area in the middle, which if you notice would be one big rectangle, and the rectangle's length here would actually be the perimeter of the base that I chose. So if I unfolded that, I'd have all, all those sides, and that would then be the length of this. So this is then the height. So you can see where all this comes from. There's the height. Here is the perimeter of the base. The area of the base goes there, and we have two of those. So I'm going to go ahead and find the perimeter of that base by taking 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6, which is, of course, 22. So I'm going to fill that into my formula. That I have two of the 30s, the areas of the base, plus the perimeter, which I found to be 22 of that base, times the height, because that would be the height of the rectangle that is made in that surface net. So when I work that out, 2 times 30 is 60. 22 times 11 is 242. I have to add those together, and I get an answer of 302 units squared. Remember, we're covering it in squares. That would take 30 squares to cover this piece, 30 to cover the back piece, and you could do it like this. You could find each individual one. This side would be 11 times 6, so you'd have a 66 up here, and there's a 66 that you can't see back there. You'd have this top that is a an 11 by 5, which is a 55, which is a 55 down here. So you can do it like that and do all of those individual pieces. You have two 55s, two 66s, two 30s. Add them all together, you'll still get that answer of 302. Next, we have a cylinder. It has the exact same formula. Surface area equals two big bases plus the perimeter of that base times the height. It's just that this time, the base shape is a circle. If I were to draw this out, it would look like a long rectangle with a circle on each side. That would be what the surface net looks like. So there's your two bases, base one and base two. The distance across this rectangle is going to be actually the distance around the circle, which we find by doing pi times diameter. That's how we find the circumference of a circle. The height, of course, is the height of the rectangle, six. So now, how do I piece all that together? Well, I kind of could write, rewrite this. How do I find the area of the base? Well, it's a, it's a circle, so radius squared times pi. How do I find perimeter? Well, that's the same as circumference, so I take pi times diameter, and then I take it times the height. So let me fill all that in. Two, radius squared. Well, if it's 16 all the way across the circle, then it's 8 halfway across the circle, so that would be 8 squared times pi plus pi times diameter times a height of 6. Now it's just a matter of working all of that out, typing that all into my calculator. If you do that, you get 703.36 units squared. That would be enough squares to cover this whole thing and all of the two circles should probably also show you how to do it with pi notation because I think it's easier as pi notation. So if I did pi notation, I could say, well, this is 8 squared pi's, which is 64 pi. And then I could take say, well, I take that times 2 and I'm at 128 pi. And over here I have 16 times 6, which is 96, 96 pi. So I could add these two together and get 224 pi and then hit it in, and then type it into my calculator which of course gets you still the same answer of 703.36 units squared all right here we have another prism the base of this prism has to be this shape because it's the one that has a congruent parallel base to it so i'm going to count those up that's a 1 2 3 4 5 6 sided figure this is called a hexagonal prism 
A um, couple of different ways to do this. You could just divide this out into a whole bunch of different rectangles through the middle, and then these two hexagons on the outside. Either way, you're going to kind of have to find, kind of have to cut it to find the area of the base. So I'm going to do that real quickly. This would be nine times ten, which is ninety for this piece. And over here, I would have a five by 4 which is 20 so if I add those together my base has an area of 110 units squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my formula down of course two big B's plus P times H well I have my big my area of my base now which is 110 I just need to find the perimeter of that so be careful when you're finding perimeter you need to make sure you have all the numbers you need so let me go 9 plus 10 is 19 I don't have this bottom number so I have to go find it remember if this is 9 and this is 5, then I'd have to add those together to get this to be 14. So I am now have a 14 there. I have a 4. I have a 5. I don't have this distance right here. Remember, if I know that 10 is the entire distance and this is 4 of it, then this must be 10 minus 4, which is 6 of it. Now I can add all those up. So let me start again. I'm going to mark a corner and start from here. So 10 plus 14 is 24, 28, 33, 39. 48, it's 48 units around that thing, so I could put that in as the perimeter, and then remember the height is the distance between the bases, so it's 5, and then I'm ready to type that into my calculator, 2 times 110 plus 48 times 5, that's of course 220, and that is 240, and I'm going to get 460 units squared. Of course you can just look at this as a whole bunch of little rectangles and then this these two big bases so you could do it that way and I want to mention one other way you could slice it right here and kind of tear these two pieces apart and do it as two rectangular prisms and then add the two rectangular prisms together the problem is is that little rectangle that I just made in red you can't paint it and so I think about painting this thing would be different if it was all together as if you would than if you would tear it apart and then try to paint both of them separately and put it back together. That little rectangle that I drew will not be need to, need to be subtracted once, it'll need to be subtracted twice because you can't paint that for this bigger rectangular prism and you can't paint it for the smaller rectangular prism. So if you do it that way of tearing it apart into a large rectangular prism and a smaller rectangular prism, you just need to remember that there are two rectangles you'll have to subtract if, if you do it that way because this side you won't be able to paint because it's touching that other one and this one this far up you won't be able to paint because it's covered up by the other one so you'll need to subtract it not once but twice